Hi, I'm Scott Papa, member of Team Discraft. Welcome to another Discraft Pro Golf Clinic. Today, approaches. It's not a drive and it's not a putt. It's the one that's going to get you to the basket when you didn't get there the first shot. We're going to be talking about shot selection, disc selection, and basic form on how to make the approaches work. So when throwing approaches, a lot of people wonder, how do I do it? Well, I know when I first started the sport, I was great at throwing a driver on a big spike hyzer line and into the basket. And I thought, this is great, and it does work for me really well, unless I'm in the woods or there's something off to the right side, and then I'm in trouble because now I don't have an approach shot. So you know what? Approaches can be all different kinds of things for different people. They can be thrown different ways, and they can be thrown with different discs. You need to make that decision which disc and which approach is right for you. First off, we need to think about how we're going to hold that disc. It's not really a drive and it's not really a putt. It's this great blend of both. You need some power, not as much as a drive, but you need some finesse. You need some control, but not as much finesse and control as a putt. So it's going to be a great blending of both of those shots, so why shouldn't it be a blending of both of those grips? We're going to start with the driving grip, that power grip where you want to get it, grip it, rip it. My grip on a driver is what they call a combination grip. It's some power grip and some fan grip. What I've got is actually the first and fourth finger gripping hard on the rim while the other two fingers are coming in on the flight plate. I've got power and a little control with that thumb gripping down hard. I've got a great pinch on there. That disc is not getting out of there until it rips out and wants to go 100 miles an hour. On a putter, however, I'm going to have all of my fingers just on the flight plate themselves. My leading edge finger is up here on the rim to give me a nice control as to where I'm going to let it go at the basket. But these fingers here, I'm not looking for power, I'm looking for the ability to keep it flattest and let it go. So how am I going to get those two together? Well, when I'm holding the mid-range disc, I bring that first finger up instead of holding it down underneath there, and I've still got a little bit of power with my pinky finger, and the other ones are still holding on to that flight plate. A great mixture of control and power. I'm not going to throw this 400 feet but I don't need to. I'm already pretty close to the basket. I just need to make that final approach. So when I'm talking about an approach, what disc am I talking about? For me, it's the buzz. We're talking about a great controllable mid-range disc, has a nice straight flight, and then right at the end is just slightly overstable, meaning for right-hand players, it's going to turn in from the right to the left. Why is that great? Because you know what? I don't need a ton of room to work now, but I do need a little bit of room to work to let it come in on that hyzer line. Now, that doesn't mean that every shot has to be thrown on a hyzer line. Might mean that you don't have any of that room over there. Maybe you have a little bit of room to the left, so you need a disc that's going to go more left to right. Something that's understable, something like a Meteor or a Stratus might work for you. Or you can even take a buzz. Maybe you have that feeling for it, and you can actually turn it on a line itself. There's a lot of different discs you can use and a lot of different approaches that you can use for the approach. Let's get down to the techniques of an approach shot. Remember now, this isn't a drive, so we don't need that full run up where we're trying to generate all kinds of power in our throw. All we're trying to do now is get from our point here to that basket there in a nice smooth, consistent fashion. We're looking for control. The drives are great, but every time that you get lots of movement, you just open yourself up for a loss of control. So there's actually two different ways that you can gain that control. Either from a standing position where your body isn't really moving at all, all you're doing is just kind of twisting, or you can compact that running approach. I know for me when I first started, I had a really difficult time throwing approaches from a standing position. Why? Well, because my upper body was really in tune with my lower body as far as the timing thing goes. 
it knew that when my feet were doing this, the upper body needed to come around, and by the time I was ready to throw, I was throwing right where I wanted to. Well, when I was standing, boy, it was really tough to figure out where I was throwing because my body wasn't in sync. So instead of a big run up, I compacted it and had something that looked like this. Boom. Now it was great. I had the timing down of a drive, but I had a nice compact and very controlled approach. So I was much more consistent as far as my release goes on the disc. That helped me a lot. Now though, I've even gone further and I can actually stand finally. How did I figure that out? Because before I was just standing straight up and just trying to throw. I wasn't involving my lower body at all. Now I've got my lower body much more involved with the approach shot. I'm getting bent at my hip, I'm getting bent at my knees, and I'm doing the weight transfer that I would normally do in a drive, but I'm doing it while standing still. I'm now being able to come back, getting the weight on that back foot, and just really throwing through nicely. I'm not running up anymore, but I've still got now that weight transfer, which helps me keep the release point of my disc where I want it to be. Warning, you're getting ready to make the biggest mistake you can with your approach shot, and that is stopping with your body. You've now thought, hey, I can do this. I can throw with that body down here planted firmly, giving you a nice control. But then you come through and that disc comes and you stop your upper body. Oops, okay, you've just lost all your power and you're definitely gonna lose some of your control. Just like on your drive, let that body follow around. Come through, throw, and let it follow through. That's going to help you a lot, gonna get you the shot that you want. Whether you're using the standing position or the compact run-up, there are a couple key things to remember for success in getting a good approach shot. Remember now, when you're throwing to have that nice straight shot, body form is critical. You want to keep a nice fluid and nice flat line here, okay? Also, remember your wrist is going to follow your arm. So the minute that you bring that arm down, that wrist is going to follow it. There's nothing wrong with that if you're coming through and trying to throw a hyzer line at the basket. But don't expect that if you're down here, that it's going to be easy to keep that disc flat. Up here, much easier to keep a nice flat flight. If you want to throw a turnover shot, again, rather than trying to bend that wrist, come up through here and get it turned over going to be easy to control and you're going to be able to get that flight path that you want. But if you want that straight shot and you're going to let the disc do what it's built to do without forcing it into either shot, make sure to be coming through. Everything is all lined up. Your weight is going from the back to the front and as you're coming through, you're delivering a nice flat straight shot. This is going to allow the disc to go out on a flat flight plate and the disc will then do whatever it's built to do at the end. That's the approach shot. Today, we've gone through shot selection, we've gone through disc selection, and we've given you some options on throwing techniques. Now it's up to you. Go out there, hit the field, grab some discs, and practice those approaches. Hey, and while you're at it, learn some more about our sport. Go to www.discraft.com and check out our other pro video clinics. My name's Scott Papa, member of Team Discraft. Thanks for watching.